Hi, I'm Mark Velker with VMware and the uh, DEF Core Committee, and I'm here today with Chris Hodge, who's the OpenStack Foundation's Interoperability Engineer. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit today about DEF Core. Um, so Chris, why don't you uh, start off by giving us a little uh, introduction to DEF Core and why the Foundation cares about it. So DEF Core is the uh, board-appointed committee that is defining the interoperability standard for OpenStack. Um, and what the interoperability standard is supposed to do is give vendors a guideline of with, that is backed by tests of um, you know a guideline that's backed by tests of, 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 of the products that they can sell and put the OpenStack logo onto with the intent of giving users a guarantee that they'll be able to port applications written on one OpenStack cloud to another OpenStack cloud. Right, and we should probably specify that um, what DEF Core is primarily focused on today are, are capabilities that are exposed to end users. Uh, so not necessarily to administrators, uh, but things that end users can actually write code against. Fair enough? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think that'd be fair enough. So um, DEF Core obviously became kind of the enforcing part of the standard uh, earlier this year, uh, and we've got a couple guidelines that are out there now. Can you give us maybe a quick overview of some of the things that people can expect to see in those guidelines now? Yeah, so, so right now when you look at the guidelines, we are targeting uh, two different sets of what we would call components, and these are essentially uh, projects that can be licensed. One, one is for compute and one is for storage, uh, particularly object storage. And, um, you know, so, so with, with the 2015-05 and 2015-07 guidelines, uh, we have a basic set of capabilities that define how your uh, OpenStack compute or how your OpenStack's object storage or the combination which we call OpenStack uh, platform should run. Um, but currently we're working on a new guideline which is expanding the capabilities across those to not only include uh, Nova and Swift as the projects we're testing against, but also the rest of the kind of core OpenStack projects including Keystone, Glance, uh, and Neutron. So Neutron, uh, while we're talking about Neutron, we should probably talk about some of the new capabilities that are being proposed there. Uh, so I think that's one that's been of interest to the community for a long time. Um, so yesterday at the board meeting uh, here in Tokyo, um, the uh, next guidelines draft went up uh, before the board, uh, so we could actually start soliciting feedback on that. Uh, it won't go up for a final approval until January. Uh, so there's a few months here where we have uh, some built-in feedback time. Um, it does include new Neutron capabilities, um, which I know you and I have worked on quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so among other things, we'll see floating IPs, security groups, uh, and L2 and L3 CRUD operations. Um, so you know, kind of four buckets of basic capabilities for, for OpenStack networking for the first time uh, that hopefully we'll be able to uh, count on. Um, so that brings up the question of how people can supply feedback, uh, because not all those things are things that are implemented widely across a lot of clouds today. Uh, it's, it's a little bit controversial in some cases. Uh, so you want to talk a little bit about how people can bring in feedback? Yeah, so uh, there are a few ways that you can get involved with the, with the DEF Core process. Uh, the first is just coming to the meetings. Uh, we meet every week on Wednesdays at 1500 UTC. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great place to, you know, you, you can take a look at the, at the, at the proposed guideline and uh, offer feedback and contribute to the process. Uh, the guidelines are stored on the OpenStack uh, GitHub repository, uh, the OpenStack Git repository, at um, and uh, and we also follow the kind of the standard OpenStack development process. So you can offer feedback directly on a guideline through patches and code reviews. Great. Um, so three months until that uh, guideline goes up for the board. Um, what do you think is going to be the thing we discuss the most? Um, so. Uh, Definitely networking is going to be at the top of everybody's list. Uh, you know, as we try to balance uh, existing network models with network models that we want, you know, that we would like to see happen in the future. Um, but I also think that we're also going to be looking at some uh, uh, blocks and image storage uh, capabilities too and, and trying to decide, you know, exactly what feature set we want in there to, to guarantee interoperability. Okay. Um, How about so you? You know, I, th I think networking is, is probably high on the list as well. Obviously, we spent a good deal of time with that, and the board actually had told us from a previous meeting that they wanted that to be one of the big priorities for this next set of guidelines, uh, because it is something that um, OpenStack has sort of mutually exclusive options for. Um, so it's kind of a tricky area. Um, but something you said earlier is something I want to go back to. Um, we talked a little bit about how OpenStack is changing as a result of DEF Core. Um, so I think maybe we should talk a little bit about um, how that's influencing some of the choices that projects are making. Um, obviously, we've seen uh, a lot of bugs go into OpenStack uh, and into uh, uh, tests as well. Um, and seeing those get fixed has been pretty satisfying as an outcome. 
Um, and I know we just came from a session earlier today uh, where we had a cross-project meeting talking about things like how to deal with images in OpenStack Clouds and how to deal with API transitions in OpenStack Clouds. Um, and that's something that uh, you know we're, we're starting to roll up more of that feedback to the TC, uh, to the PTLs directly, and to the user committee as well, uh, which is something pretty exciting to see. Uh, any other things that um, you know along those lines that you like to talk about? Yeah, I mean, I think that you know what what you know what what you bring up is you know you know speaks to the intentions of the of the Def Core committee and the interoperability process is that it's it's not just a branding and marketing program, but it's a way to. Um, give vendors guidance on what they need to provide for their users. It gives users assurance that applications they write can be ported from cloud to cloud. But it also actively solicits feedback from the developers and the vendors and the users to, to, to help shape the standard and truly be uh, a community-defined standard. Uh, you know, not anything that is defined by one group. And you know, and so in that way it, it really captures the, the essence of open collaborative development. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. So you know, Def Core as it exists today is really powered by a fairly small set of people that are doing kind of the legwork of things. Uh, but we've actually uh, started to see a pretty big expansion in the number of people that sort of get consulted or contribute to uh, reviews and patches going in. Uh, those sorts of things. So that's that's maybe a good note to end on uh, is talking a little bit about um, how people can get involved in the active uh, decisions that we're making throughout the course of the, of the next three months, uh, and then also for the next guideline as well. Yeah, the, uh, three three great ways to get involved: uh, come to the meetings, share your voice, uh, um, uh, contribute code reviews to the to the current uh, uh, specs and patch sets we have up for the Def Core repository. Um, but also, if you're running a cloud. Downloading the RefStack client and running the tests and submitting your test results is also going to give us great feedback on what capabilities are out there and what we should really be focusing on for the next guidelines. Yeah, I think um, we, we've, we've kind of talked earlier about how uh, of the 12 criteria that Def Core has, about eight of them are trailing indicators of market acceptance for a capability. Yep. Um, so getting those results in really helps us uh, get some visibility into what folks are actually deploying and what actually works in the clouds that people are operating today. Uh, as well as the user survey. We should say that um, you know, last user survey got a big bump in the number of people that uh, responded. Um, and that's been really good for us to, to be able to have a little bit more feedback uh, from the end community. Well, thanks for talking with us today. Uh, have a great summit, and we'll see you soon. Yeah.